The fighting game genre in reality is a niche genre. This can be an easily forgotten fact for those of us inside the little FGC bubble, but in truth, outside of a few elite players, namely your Tekkens, your Street Fighters, and the biggest of boys, Mortal Kombat, fighting games don't garner much mainstream appeal. Bro, I even hesitate to say that Street Fighter and Tekken even actually garner that mainstream appeal, but they certainly, they certainly have appeal enough to often reach a hand out into the mainstream zeitgeist and pull in a few folks periodically. The same cannot be said, however, for nearly every other fighting game franchise. Series like King of Fighters are on their 15th numbered installment, and if I threw a rock right now, it'd have a better chance of hitting the Pope than a KOF fan. <laughs> yes, that's an exaggeration, but barely. Guilty Gear has been churning out games since 1998, and yet most real gamers gamers wouldn't have a clue if you asked them who Soul Bad Guy was. And yes, Guilty Gear saw record sales for the series with its latest installment, and KOF 15 will likely see similar success in regard to its own franchise, and it's good that the numbers are growing, but the sales are paltry compared to heavy hitters in the fighting game genre, and only dwarfed further if we look beyond it. So what are these games and the fighting game genre in general doing wrong? Well, if you ask me, across the board, it's a myriad of things, so let's get into it. Now I realize not everyone is as fortunate as Mortal Kombat and the good folks at Netherrealm when it comes to popularity and budget. Not every fighting game gets to coast off of its gory gimmick, but I'll be damned if they don't do a lot of shit right and are the reason why so much of what others are doing feels wrong. For one, back when Mortal Kombat was still being developed by Midway Games, they made a little something called Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, a game that stumbled all over itself in any number of ways, but what it did do was introduce the most perfectly executed formula for storytelling and story modes in a fighting game up to that point. Matter of fact, it was so good that Netherrealm has done very little <laughs> in the way of changing it since the style was introduced in 2008, and I don't even fucking blame them. The only reason didn't take off then and there was because it was tied to a less than stellar game, but when they used the same story system in the Mortal Kombat soft reboot from 2011 simply titled Mortal Kombat and more commonly referred to as MK9, boom, smash, hit. There'd been nothing like it. Slapping this story system on a fantastic game single-handedly put a foot on the necks of every other fighting game developer. It was time to get big or get the fuck out. I say all of that just to say your fighting game needs a story mode. No one knows what's going on in these games. No one can draw a connection to any of these characters. There are characters in Mortal Kombat that I would write off as someone I don't want to play as, but the story would either make me play as them, or have me watching them do something cool, or develop relationships with other characters, which makes me feel like I know them a little bit, which makes me give them a shot, you know, things like that. And also, these things are 60 fucking dollars. When it was announced that Battlefield 2042 wouldn't have a story and would only be multiplayer, that game got raked over the fucking coals, and this was before it came out and we knew it was a big buggy fucking mess. The same rules apply. Paying $60 so I could just hop online and fight every fight stick wielding shithead from around the world is crazy. You have to give me something else. You have to give me more substance. Well, Street Fighter V. Had a story though, right? Wrong. Street Fighter V's goofy ass released a piece of shit story held together by hope and duct tape, and it came out five months after the release of the game. <laughs> yes, an utterly forgettable, pale imitation of another realm story, and it couldn't even come out at the game's launch. But wait, there's more. <laughs> In the year of our Lord Jesus Christmas 2021, <laughs> yes, last year, Guilty Gear Strive was released. 
And I know what you're thinking. Oh, cool. Well, they surely had a story mode. Yeah, actually, you're right. But it's non-interactable. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. It is hours of in-engine cutscenes you take absolutely no part in. Whose idea was this? Oh, yeah, sl slap those cutscenes together. Take the Mortal Kombat. Take that Mortal Kombat. Uh, good luck competing with us now. Ha ha, that we slapped all these cutscenes together. <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing? Listen, it doesn't have to be as big, flashy, grandiose, or long as a Mortal Kombat story, but it has to be there and it has to be good. And if you don't want to do the story thing, that's cool. But put something engaging and different in its place. Don't just have a basic arcade mode where I fight eight AI opponents and it boots me back to the main menu without an inkling of ceremony, Guilty Gear Strive. What Street Fighter V did with this arcade mode, once it actually fucking got one, was inspired and engaging with different arcade roles for each entry in the series that limit you only to the characters that appeared in each particular entry. Yes, the rewards should have been more than just artwork, but at least it was something. I didn't even mind what Street Fighter 4 did in lieu of a big cinematic story mode, and it gets a pass anyway because it was before the big story boom, we'll say. Each character you did the arcade with had an in-engine cutscene with their respective rival before the final fight, and after the final fight, you'd get treated to that character's ending in a full anime-style animation short though they may have been. Oh, and, oh, and while I'm on the subject, Soul Calibur 6's Libra of Souls story mode thing was a fucking chef's kiss, an excellent fucking way to circumvent and shake up the fighting game story, and if you don't know, now you know that thing needs more attention and more credit. So yeah, blah blah blah, these games should have story mode, wham wham wham, I'm an idiot, right? Cool. But let's talk about something else. And for this one, I'm specifically looking in the direction of Guilty Gear, King of Fighters, and any other extra niche fighting game out there, Skullgirls and whatnot, I want to talk about skins. Add some fucking skins to your game. At the very least, every character should have two, a default and an alt, not colors. Fuck your colors. Exactly zero people give a fuck about colors. Listen, if I'm playing Strive, and I'm perusing the characters, and I look at, and I look at, I don't, I don't even know, May. Let's just say I look at May, and I go, I don't like how this character looks. I don't want to be her. I don't want to control her. I won't feel any different if she's wearing blue instead of orange. She still got the same big old hat and jacket. I don't like it. I won't pick her. I don't actually feel that way about May, but I'm just saying. But if I'm a discerning individual, like I actually am, I am going to be severely limited by the characters that I actually want anything to do with. Unless there were possibly a way I could change any given character's outfit to one of many predetermined outfits, perhaps by unlocking it through achievement or maybe paying some sort of fee no surely nothing like that could ever exist just the dreams of an old fool <laughs> look i don't care i don't care for e honda i've never desired to play honda in street fighter i don't want to be some generic sumo dude when I can be some sort of military adorned freak with psycho powers or a thick thighed policewoman but in Street Fighter V, Honda had a skin that makes him look like a kappa. Yeah, <laughs> yes, now I'm a big sumo turtle spirit. Long story short, I got into playing Honda for the first time and it turned out he was really good. Fighting games aren't all about trying to dominate other real life players for everybody. 
These aren't the fucking arcade days. Like every other video game, there is a level of fantasy fulfillment and immersion that should probably be catered to in one way or another. But a lot of the fighting game community thinks it can ignore those players' wants in favor of some weird fetish to relive the good old days or something. I don't even know. Games like Tekken and Soul Calibur scratch the skin's itch mainly through customization, and that's also perfectly fine. And even so, they still give lots of characters alternate outfits. Injustice 2 and MK11 seamlessly blend the idea of customization and predetermined outfits, and it's fucking amazing. Now listen, you may say, look here, idiot. Making skins takes time, and for extra time, we need extra resources, namely that fine greenery you call money, and that's true. However, you will have more money than you've ever had, more than you can shake a stick at, more than you know what to do with if you are continuously dropping a slew of fire DLC skins for a price. Have we learned nothing from the likes of Apex and Fortnite and Street Fighter and Brawlhalla and the list just goes on and on. I mean, Street Fighter V basically pumped out skins and raked in money until their game was actually good. <laughs> Look, I don't think I hate these games because I'm criticizing them. I only feel this passionately about their problems because I like the games. I want these games to do good and they just keep doing boneheaded moves and refuse to acknowledge what year it is. They think it's 2001 and it saddens me. I'm happy Street Fighter seems to be on an uptick and I'm extremely optimistic that Street Fighter 6 will release like a post MK9 fighting game should with content aplenty, that is if you plan on charging full price because any of you can go free to play whenever you want though it might be kind of hard without any skins to sell <laughs> but yeah the days of the 15 16 character base roster are over it's not 1990 anything street fighter 5 it's not 2002 guilty gears drive don't give me minimal characters and minimal content and tell me to punch people online until i'm bored how about you try to keep me from getting bored instead? Anyway, man, it's Waifu Belector. I just wanted to talk about some fighting game stuff. Feel free to tell me what you think if you give a fuck at all. But even if you don't, something I hope you do do is go out and get you some maidens. Again, it's Waifu Belector. You are an awesome person, and I wish peace upon you.